Welcome to today's Surprise Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth. I'm Vice President of Roots Magic and one of its developers. And also with us this evening is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And Bruce, of course, is the President of Roots Magic and its author. And many of you probably checked your email yesterday and got an unexpected surprise. An email announcing the release of Roots Magic version 6. We know we've been quiet lately, and it's because we've been hard at work to finish the newest version of our prize genealogy software. And tonight, you're going to be the first to see a public demonstration of its new features, like online publishing, find everywhere, web tags, county check explorer, the new editable timeline view, and more. And see for yourself why your Family Tree magazine named Roots Magic the best all-around genealogy program for both casual and serious genealogists. And in the spirit of today's season, of this holiday season, we'll also be giving some prizes out at the end to some lucky participants. First, we'd like to start with a poll. Okay, and we would like to know what new feature, before we demonstrate them to you, what new feature in Roots Magic 6 are you the most excited about? The online publishing? the editable timeline view, find everywhere, web tags, or another feature. And uh, go ahead and click on your choice. Okay, and the results of the initial poll, 29% of you are most excited about the online publishing, 21% were most interested in the editable timeline view, 33% in the find everywhere feature, 10% in the web tags, and 7% in other. Very interesting. We'll run a similar poll at the end and see if after seeing the demonstration if any of your, your uh, most exciting feature changes. And with that introduction, I'll turn the time over to Bruce. Hey, thanks for joining us. Seems like it's been a while since we've uh, been able to meet together here in one of these webinars. Uh, so. What I want to do is I just want to actually just jump right in. We're going to start with some of these features that we talked about, the County Check Explorer, web tags, and so on. And I'm going to cover kind of the big main features because we've got a limited amount of time. But in the future, we are going to be doing individual webinars on each of these features. So we'll be able to go into a lot more detail on these individual features. Tonight is actually more of a uh, kind of an overview to kind of get, get you a, a good feeling as to what is new in, in Roots Magic 6. Okay, I am going to start. First, what I'm going to do is the County Check Explorer. Now, back in Roots Magic 5, we released a feature called County Check. And what County Check did is when you went into a person's edit screen, and you entered a fact for them, you entered a date and a place, if that county or state didn't happen to exist on the date you entered, Roots Magic would pop up a little screen and saying, oh, that didn't exist. And once you were in that screen, you could kind of do things like uh, look up information online for that county or, or view an online map. Well, we had a lot of requests for the ability to actually just look up counties uh, and see that information without having to actually go enter incorrect information just to get that, that tool to come. So what we've done is we created a new feature under the Tools menu, and it's called County Check Explorer. And what this does is this gives you access into that County Check database without having to go enter incorrect information. So if I were to go into the County Check Explorer, I can just come up and I just type in uh, a county or a state or a country. Now remember, this, uh, this actually works for the US, Canada, Australia, and the UK. I'm going to go ahead and enter um, a county. I'll enter Bernalillo, B-E-R-N-A-L-I-L-L-O, New Mexico. And I can abbreviate, do whatever I want on that. And it's going to give me uh, the different results. So it's going to give me Bernalillo County, New Mexico, United States, and it's also going to give me New Mexico as well. Now, when I highlight either of these, it's going to give me the information over here on the right for that county or that state or whatever it is I'm highlighting. So, for example, if I 
uh, select Bernalillo County, it's going to give me that information. And I can go get online information or go to the online maps uh, at the Newberry Library, the, the historical county maps. Same thing for New Mexico. If I select New Mexico, I can see what New Mexico was known as. And I can see what New Mexico belonged to, the United States. And I can see what New Mexico contained. Okay, You can see there's a bunch of things. New Mexico, it's according to this, between 1863, uh, January 28th and February 24th of 1863, it actually contained a county called Arizona, Arizona County. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on these on, this online info button for New Mexico. Now, when I do that, what Roots Magic is going to do is it's going to take me to the Family Search Wiki page for New Mexico. And as I go through there, I can find out information about New Mexico. I can see some historical information, information about each of the individual counties, extinct or renamed counties. There's that Arizona County that we saw in the Roots Magic County check. Okay, I can see information about research tools and external links for New Mexico as well. Okay, let's say I happen to in instead choose Bernalillo County. When I do that online information, it's going to take me to the Family Search Wiki page for Bernalillo County, New Mexico. And again, I have similar information for Bernalillo County as well. Okay, now I'm going to come back here. The other button, the online map button, what that does is that takes me to the Newberry Library. Okay, and what the Newberry Library is, they have a historical county uh, database. And so what this is doing is this is bringing up New Mexico and it's showing me here is what the counties looked like on February 24, 1863. Okay, so you can see, you can see the, these, the black lines here, those are, as I scroll down here, those are the historical counties. The little white lines, those are the current counties. Those are the, the modern county boundaries. So you can kind of get an idea of what the county's shapes looked like at that time compared to what they look like now. Now, I'm actually going to go and change this. What I want to do is I'm going to go look, and there was an Arizona county after January of 1863. So let's just pick February 1st, 1863. I'm going to go pick February 1st of 1863 and tell it to refresh the map. Okay, now it's redrawing the map and let's go ahead and pan this map over a little bit so you can kind of see a little better. Okay, here is New Mexico as we know it now and of course here is Arizona, but at the time on that date this is actually what New Mexico looked like and there you had your Arizona County. You also had several other counties uh, that existed at that time. Some of these counties are still counties. They just have shrunk to fit within the New Mexico boundaries. Okay, So that's what the historical counties uh, maps let you do. I can also go and say, well, show me what they look like more recently. Uh, let's pick 1950. And I can say refresh the map. Okay, And there's what the boundary, boundaries look like on February 1st, 1950. Now this is what's nice about those white borders versus the black ones. As you can see, there's basically one little difference between 1950 and the current boundaries, and that would be uh, that the, this county was boundary was moved over to here. Okay. Okay. So that's that is the that is County Check Explorer. Like I say, I can go in here and I can type in any county or state um, in the U.S., Canada, Australia, no, uh, or the U.K and get those results and then select those results to see more information here and then go online to find out even more information beyond that. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, the next feature I want to I want to talk about is what's called web tags. Now um, we've had several people say they don't really quite understand what web tags are and basically web tags are very simple. It's a way to let you add a link to a web page to a person or to a source or to uh, a place, whatever. A lot of times you'll come across a web page 
that is about one of your ancestors or is about a place in your database. Or you may have a source that there is a, uh, a copy of it or information about that on a web page. But what this web tags let you do is link a person or a source or a place to a web page. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go into Dr. James Smith. I'm going to go into his edit screen. And on the edit screen for a person, we have a new button over here called Web Tags. Okay, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit cut off because we're at a really low resolution uh, for, for the uh, webinar. But the Web Tags, you'll notice right now it says there are no Web Tags at all. Okay, if I click on Web Tags, it's going to give me a list of any websites that I have linked Dr. James Smith to. If I want to add a web page, I can just click on Add, and it says, okay, what am I linking from? In this case, it's a person, and so it's already pre-filled out. But I can change that to a source or the citation or a place or a research log item. Okay, that's a really nice one because if you are keeping a research log and you say, oh, the research log, I happen to find this information online, you can actually link to that web page. But I, I go ahead and choose what this web link is linked to. I enter a descriptive name for this page. I enter the URL or the website address, the HTTP colon slash slash something. And then I can also enter a note about this. So if I happen to find, uh, find a, a copy of his grave, I'm on find a grave, I can actually link to the find a grave page. Now I'm going to show you a little a little shortcut because this this is fairly simple. But in order to do this, you need to open up your browser, find the web page you're looking for, and then copy and paste the URL from there into here. But what we've done is we've added one of the things we've added is on our web search page, and hopefully you've all taken advantage of the web search page. The web search page takes whoever's highlighted. When I click on web search it goes and searches whatever website. So I can go in here and I can say search Ancestry or search Family Search or search uh, Genealogy Bank or whatever. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick Find a Grave. And when I select Find a Grave, uh, Roots Magic is actually goes out and tries to find this person out on Find a Grave. Now, this isn't really this person, although it, this actually happens to match the name and the years. Keep in mind this database I'm using, I always have to remind people, this is a completely fake database. These are not real people. So, you know, don't don't be emailing tech supports asking, you know, whose file this is because it's your family. It's not. Okay, it's it's fake. Okay, but if I happen to be in my web search and I happen to find this person and I go in and I say, oh look, this person, there it is. There's the grave information. There's the information I'm looking for. Well, what I can do is you'll notice there's a button, Add Web Tag. And when I click that, Roots Magic has already selected the person that I was doing that web search for and has plugged the URL in for me. So all I need to do is go in and say uh, the name. I could just say Find a Grave Entry. And I can, in, I can enter a note. So like if there's information uh, on this page or I want to enter a note, I can put, you know, this is a note about this find a grave entry. You know, so I can put whatever I want there, click OK, and I have now added a web tag to James Smith. So if I go back over here to James Smith, when I open up his edit screen, you'll see Web tags now shows a one. I do have one web tag here. When I click on that, there's that entry right there. There's that entry that I just made from the web search. So I can I can go in and do add. You know, I click add and I can add it right here uh, if I want to do that, or I can do it from that web search as well. Now I can also edit that. So if I want to change something about this, I can click edit and I can go in here and make changes, add more to the notes or or you know, adjust the name, whatever I want to do. If I want to delete it, if it's if for some reason that link has been broken or whatever and I want to delete it, I can go up there and delete that as well. What's nice though is if I come in here and I say, oh, there's a find a grave entry, I can just highlight it in the list and click go and it jumps me right to that page that I had basically created the web link for. 
of the web tag for. So that's what a web tag lets me do. And it's not limited, I'm not limited to just doing that, as I said, with people. So if I'm working on a person, I have a web tag there. If I'm working on a source, if I'm working on a source, if I go in and edit a source, okay, that source, I can either have web tags for the master source or I can have web tags for the detail, for the specific citation. Okay, so I, sources and citations each can have their own web tags. So if there's a web page that's just about, uh, generally about a book, um, I, can, I can go to the master text and I can, I can create a web tag to the page about that book generally. On the other hand, if there's a page that says, oh, there's this book, but you know, on page whatever, and they actually have a scanned copy of it, or they, they have whatever information, you can create web tags for your citation as well. Okay, you also can do web tags for places. So if I go into my master place list, if I have a particular place, um, when I go in and edit that, I can create a web tag for a place. So if there's uh, a website all about that place, you know, the government website or whatever, um, I can act, go in and add a web tag for that place. Again, I'm not limited to one web tag. I can have as many web tags as I want for each one of these records. So, so for a person, I can link to, I can link to 100, 200 different, different websites if I want. There's no limit to how many of these web tags I can have uh, for any particular record. Okay, the last place currently that you can use web tags is in the research manager. So if I were to create a research log for somebody, and you can tell this is kind of a repetitive thing, it's just, but if I go in and edit this research log, I can choose one of these, one of these, I'll go in and edit one, and you will have the ability to add web tags. So when you create your research log, you know, you're going to say, this is my goal, for this research log, and then you're going to make entries. I look on this date, this is what I was trying to find, and I looked in this source that was here, and here were the results of my search. Well, I can use web tags to actually link to the site, to, to the actual site that this source was on. So it lets me actually create uh, the web tags for that. Now, in the future, we will be looking at adding web tags to other types of records. But as I said, right now, web tags are available for people, for uh, places, for sources, citations, and for research log items. But again, we will be adding uh, the web tags to other things. Now, one thing, other thing we've done for the web tags is in the reports, there's a new report under lists, and that's called the web tags list. And what that does is you choose which type of web tags uh, you want to include in the report, whether you want those notes. Again, you can enter notes for any web tag. Do you want those included? And then you just generate the report, and that's going to generate a report that's kind of hard to see right here. But it's going to list the person or the repository or the, or the source or the citation or the place or whatever and show you what you entered, the URL for that, which is sometimes long and cryptic like this. And then if you want the notes to print, it will print the notes as well. So it's a way to get a list of, of all of those web tags or all the web tags for a person or all the web tags for a place or, or whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on uh, to the next new feature we've added. And that is going to be uh, the new editable timeline view. Now, in Roots Magic, we've, we've always, we've, we've had this timeline view since last, since last version. And the timeline view, actually, normally it looks like this. I tur I've turned some of these off so you can see more on. This is what the timeline view looked like, basically, uh, in version 5. You had your graphical timeline, uh, and then you had this part from here down. You had the list of events, which were events in this person's lifetime, which were in bold, and the birth, marriage, and death events for their siblings, their parents, their spouses, and their children. Okay, um, 
I'm going to turn this graphical timeline back off just to make more room here to show you this. What we've added is what's called a live edit panel. And this basically works just like the edit screen panel uh, on the main edit screen. We've also added these top rows, which also are from the edit screen. Okay, so if I highlight the person's information, I can come right over here and edit their name. If I highlight the spouse, I can ed edit the spouse information, the parent information. If I highlight uh, James Smith's birth, I can come over here and edit James Smith's birth information right here. Okay, if I click on the birth of his sibling, I can actually edit the birth of his sibling's information. Okay, so this is actually much more powerful than the regular edit screen because one, I'm seeing all of his family information in context with his own information, plus I can edit that information directly. I don't have to go to Dr. James Smith, edit his information, go out of his edit screen, go into his father's edit screen and edit that information. I can do all of that editing right from here. I can also add facts right from here. So I can come in and say, I want to add a fact. I can go ahead and uh, select the fact type just like I can in the edit screen. I can delete facts, including facts that belong to other people. So if I highlighted the birth of this sibling and decided that that really isn't correct, I can delete it here. Now, be careful. Um, just realize that if I go in and delete this birth of the sibling right here, it's not just removing it from Dr. James Smith's timeline. It's actually removing that event. So Sylvia's birth will actually be disappearing uh, from that. Now, if you had shared events, those show in here as well. Um, but all of that information is completely editable from here. Uh, you have on the timeline, of course, you have the person's age, the event type, the date. You have the, the name of the person that it belonged to, if it's one of the siblings or a spouse or whatever, you have the place. And then you have columns for notes, sources, and media with the check mark uh, showing whether, uh, whether that has, in, has a note or has any sources or has any media. There's also a column right here to show whether this event has been shared or this fact has been shared with somebody else. Okay, so if this fact has been shared, in this case, that census has been shared with somebody else, I can click right there to open up that shared event screen to bring that right there. Okay, now again, like I say, this is a little bit hard to see at this low of a resolution. We have to make this res the resolution of this screen much less than probably any of you have on your screens in order to make this work right on the, on the webinar on everybody's, on everybody's screen. Um, you will normally be able to easily see the details in that place information right there. Okay, now one thing, one thing I want to point out, one thing that uh, people ha don't really realize about this timeline, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of bring it to your attention. One of the things people have always wanted us to do, not just in Roots Magic, but even going all the way back to the family origins days, is to be able to edit two people at the same time. Okay? You've never been able to do that because when Roots Magic or Family Origins, and for that matter, when it brings up the edit screen, that edit screen is what's called modal, and you can't open up another screen for that person. Okay? Now, what you can do is, I, right now I'm, I'm working on this sample too. I, this is going to be really, really hard for you to see at this resolution. You're just going to have to trust me that you can do this. If I go to File and I open that same file, and I could open a different file, but if I open up that same file, and I'm going to close, I'm going to close that, and I'm going to pick Howard Smith, for example, and go to the timeline. Now, like I say, you can't really see this. On your screens, this will, this will be a lot, a lot easier to work with. But right now, you are in two different edit screens at the same time, just by opening up two copies of that same database. I can be working, looking at Howard. I can go in, and I can copy and paste information from Howard over to here, 
or if I've got multiple copies of a person, I can do that. I can also do the same thing if I open up two different databases. So if I were to go file and say open and pick a different database, I could have two databases open. Maybe I've got two databases that that both started at the as the same, but I accidentally entered data into both of them, and so now I've got two databases that I need to kind of clean up. I can do that. I can open up those two databases side by side, be able to open up the person on this side, the person on this side, and compare. I can go in and compare the information I have on those two people and be able to copy and paste information from one to the other. Okay, Tom says to tile it vertically. We'll see uh, whether that helps much. Well, horizontally, actually, it is. Well, that kind of... <laughs> that that kind of helps, but you've got you can you can see you can see you've got um, some pretty tiny text over here in this list uh, when it squeezes it down there. But yeah, you can you can open up you can open it up uh, vertically or horizontally, either way. But that's like I say, that's one of the neat things that you can now do with the timeline view, the editable timeline view, is you can be able to go into and edit more than one person at a time. Okay, one other thing while I'm here, I guess I'll point out, this is, this is just a little thing. I don't even think it shows on our, on our feature list. This is just one of those little things. When you're, when you're working on a place uh, or on an event in the place, in the past you always had the little button that would bring up the master place list for, for your database. We've added the ability to bring up the gazetteer from there as well. So if you're actually working on a place, um, you're working in a place and you aren't really sure, you can bring up the gazetteer and do the, you know, Avon, Iowa, and you can actually bring it up right there and paste it into the place and it'll paste that right into the place. So that's another little uh, little feature that we got that, uh, that isn't even on the list, but that's one of those things you can do. Uh, you can actually just pop up that gazetteer right from there. You can do that on the timeline. We did actually add that on the regular edit screen. So when you go into the person's edit screen, uh, you have that there as well. So some of the things that we've added in that timeline view, we've also carried over some of that into the actual full edit screen to help, you know, for those who want to be able to do that. Now you do still have the full edit screen. So if you're, you know, when you're working from the pedigree view, you can go into the edit screen just like you could before. And in fact, you can do still do that from here. So like I can, if I click on birth, I can edit that birth right here. But if I double click, it opens up that person at, to that same screen. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's still available. That full edit screen is still available uh, for you to use uh, in, in the same way. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the to one of my favorite features, and this is actually um, this is actually a feature that that people have been asking us for a way to do something like this for a long time. And what this is is under the search menu, there's an option called Find Everywhere, and it's got those little binoculars. And of course, you can you know you can go and uh, if you want a toolbar button, if you want a toolbar button for it, you know, you can go in and customize the toolbar, you know, right click on the toolbar and customize it and add the button. But I'm just going to go ahead and pick it from right here, find everywhere. Now, it, in the past, you had the ability to search for a person, and that would bring up a list of all the people, and you could do things like find, where you could select people, you know, find everybody whose birth date contains this, and whose surname contains that, and whatever. But the end result is it still only found people. It found people based on different kinds of data, but it still found people. Well, what search, what Find Everywhere does is it finds text that I enter wherever it happens to be in the file. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just say I want to find Smith. Now, I can enter word, an individual word or I can enter a phrase in here and when I click OK, Roots Magic is going to find all the records that have that word or have that phrase. Now, if I want all the, all the records that have two different words, but they aren't right next to each other, 
I don't want to put them both right here because Roots Magic is going to be looking for them together. But I could put Smith and, you know, Disneyland. And that's going to find every record in the file that has Smith and Disneyland in it, that have both of them. Or I can say Smith or Disneyland, and it's going to find every record that has either Smith or Disneyland or both. Okay. I'm just going to do a simple one right here. I'm going to do Smith. Oh, one other thing. If you want it to match the case, in other words, if, if I wanted it to only find Smith where that first letter is lowercase like that, I could tell it to match case. I rarely match case, but if you want to, you'll have the option to do that. Okay, so I'm going to tell it to search for Smith, and here's my results. And let me size this down a little bit. What Roots Magic has done is it has given me a list of everything in the file that has Smith in it. And it's going to show me the results, and it's going to highlight in red the, whatever word I was looking for, in this case, Smith. So these are all the people that have the word Smith. And, of course, in this case, most of them, it's their name. And that's why it shows that, that Hiram Smith Mills, it's his name. As I scroll on down, you'll see some where um, some people have two names, a, a regular name and an alternate name. Some people, you know, it may have a, there may be one of their notes. In this case, Howard Smith Sr., his birth note has the word Smith in it. And so it's telling me it's a birth note. Okay. Now, you'll notice that, that, uh, that the, little, the little link for each result, each search result, is highlighted. So if I find, if I say, if it says Burton Sylvester Smith, it's his name, I'm going to click on that link, and it's going to open Burton Sylvester Smith, and it's going to be highlighting his name right here, because that's where uh, it actually found Smith. On the other hand, if I come down here, and I say birth note, it's going to actually pop up the birth note. So whatever type of record it found, that's what clicking the edit, it's going to actually let me edit that record. Now you'll notice these people um, have edit right here, so if I actually just want to go to their, their, that person's edit screen generally, I can click on edit and it's just going to open up their edit screen so I can kind of look at all of their information right there. Okay, let's go ahead and scroll down, because at this point it's basically showing me similar to what I could have found before, you know, find everybody uh, with Smith in their name or whatever. As I scroll down, okay, now we're looking at sources. Here are all the sources that have the word Smith in them. Okay, this vital record, its name, the source name has Smith, and the footnote has. So if I go to the name, there I can actually actually go right in and do that. Okay, if there's the footnote, I can click the footnote, and I can edit the footnote right there. Okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit farther. And here are the citations. Okay, so this is the specific citation part contains the word Smith. So it might be the citation. It might be, in this case, the research notes. You know, maybe I've got, maybe, maybe I've extracted out into the research notes for this 1880 census the fact that he, this, his, uh, this was his name. He was 11. He was a son, white male. Well, if I click on that, it will take me to the research notes for that. Okay, I'm going to scroll on down a little bit. Places. Okay, here's a place that has the word Smith in it. I can click on that and I can edit the place. Go on a little farther. To-do items. Here's a to-do item that has Smith. I can go in, I can edit the to-do item. Okay, research logs. Okay, here's a research log. Okay, I got the research log. There's Howard Smith and the, the actual objective. Uh, the details is in there as well. Okay, multimedia. Okay, if I've got a picture that I've added, and the caption or the description has the word Smith. Okay, this is the only known photo of Phoebe Davis Smith. Okay, if I click on that, it will take me into there where I can actually look at that information or uh, go ahead and, um, and edit that. So, like I say, these are just a few examples of the kinds of records uh, that it will find information in. Um, but what what it's basically let, uh, just a our goal with this is to make it easy for you to find something so instead of having to know a bunch of tricks how do i search for this text to find its particular thing you just enter i'm looking for this 
and Roots Magic says, here's every place in your file that we can find this. Okay. Um, if you happen to, uh, we have somebody asking about, um, a, like if there was a cemetery name. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go over to here to somebody fairly random. I'm just going to go to Samuel William Jones. I'm going to go to his burial, and I'm going to put Smithfield Cemetery. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to put some place details. I'm going to put a cemetery name there. Okay, I'm going to go in and do search. I'm going to say find everywhere. And I'm going to put Smith. I could look for Smithfield just as easily. Okay, and so now I'm going to scroll down. And, okay, there's my places. There's my places, and there's also my place details. So, in other words, if I'm looking for a cemetery, it can find that cemetery as well. I can click on Smith there, and I can actually see the, the, the Smithfield Cemetery. And it, it's just as easy to find that in those place note, the place details notes as well. Um, you know, if I were to go into somebody else random, William Griffiths, and I go into his burial and I put, um, you know, Evergreen Cemetery and save that, and then I actually, yeah, actually I'm going to go into my into my master place list, uh, and it was Paradise. Okay, there's that Evergreen Cemetery. Oh, this is actually another thing that we've added that's new. I might as well show you while I'm off here in the in the wilderness. On the place list, when you highlight a place, it's going to show you the place details down here, and it did that before. And if you wanted to edit information about those, you would you would highlight this place and then go into place details, and that would give you the list. You can now edit this information from here. So if I want to edit the Smith Evergreen Cemetery from the place list, I can just double click right there and do that. If I want to edit the note for that Evergreen Cemetery, I can just click right there. Um, a bunch of Smiths are buried here. So I'm going to go ahead and I've, got, I've, got, I've added a note for that evergreen for that evergreen cemetery. Okay, so now when I do find everywhere and type in Smith, okay, when I go down to places, okay, there's that evergreen cemetery. So even though even though evergreen cemetery doesn't have the word Smith, the that place detail note had it, so it's going to find that as well. So like I say. You know, it's it's going to hunt every record in the file to try to find, you know, whatever it is that you are looking for. It looks in places, place details, it looks in the notes, it looks in sources, citations, to-do items, research logs, you know, everything. Um, so anyways, it's a nice, easy way to quickly find um, what it is that you're looking for. If you If you entered something and you're like, I don't have any idea, I don't remember where I put that, use Find Everywhere and it's going to find that for you. Okay, okay, I kind of tried to save what I, my favorite part for last. Um, what this is, is this is what we call um, our online publishing. Now, Roots Magic has, since day one, has had the ability to what's called, quote, create a website. And those, when, when Roots Magic would create a website, what it did is it, you you would say, um, matter of fact, I'll show you. We we've actually the old the old website creator is still in here. We just changed the name to create HTML files because that's basically really all it did is it created HTML files, created a bunch of static uh, HTML pages, kind kind of not real wonderful looking, um, and that was it. And then once it created those, it was up to you to you know, have have your server space. Uh, you know, get get some server space. It was up to you to learn how to work an FTP program to upload these files that were created. And so, what you would do in the past, and like I say, those are still there. You'd enter a project name and choose: Do I want family group sheets, or do I want pedigree charts, or do I want a combination of pedigree charts? And you'd kind of step on through uh, the options, and you'd end up with some some web pages that looked like they were created in the 1980s and um, and and you know like like most genealogy programs create just some generic you know built using tables and stuff like that 
uh, and then you had to figure out how to get them on, online. What we wanted to do was we wanted to make it easy for our users to be able to share their family information with their family and to be able to choose what information they wanted to share and be able to put it up online where they could say, hey, family, here's our family, you know, go take a look at it. Um, and so what we did is we added a publish online option. And I'm just going to go ahead and step through that. This is just a wizard, and you have two options when you first start. One is publish my information online, and the other one is manage my my.rootsmagic.com account. Okay, one of the new features that we've added in with Roots Magic is a site to be able to host the websites or the, the that you're going to create, the published websites that you're going to create. Okay, and that site is called my.rootsmagic.com. And so you can create your own account, and you have to do it through Roots Magic. You don't do it up on the website. You have to have Roots Magic, and you use Roots Magic. And you can go on, and you can create an account. So if I were to click on Manage That, if I already have created it, I can enter my login and my password. If I haven't created an account yet, I can come right here and say I want to create an account, and I enter my desired username, my desired password, and my email address. And that email address is only used if we need to contact you about your site for some reason. It's not for advertising. It doesn't go to subscribe you to a newsletter or anything. It's only for us to be able to contact you about your site if there's a, if there's a problem or an issue. Now, when you pick your desired username, that's going to become part of your website URL or your website address. So if I were to enter my desired username as Bruce, just B-R-U-C-E, then my website, when it's created, is going to be my.rootsmagic.com slash Bruce. Okay? Now, of course, if somebody else has already used that username, you don't get to use it. Okay? So the first person to pick a particular username uh, gets to use that. Okay? So that's, that's how you can manage your account. What I want to do is I actually want to publish my information online. So I'm going to go ahead and click Publish Online, and I'm going to enter a project name for the information I want to publish. Now, this name, all this is basically be, being used for is to tell, let me have a folder on my hard drive. I can choose a project folder, which is this whole first part, and the project name lets me choose this part. And all this is doing is saying, where on your hard drive, where on your computer, do you want us to create the files that we're going to publish online for you? Okay, so you can use your last name, um, you can use temp, you can use whatever you want. This project name is not the same as your username, so you can use whatever name you want right here. Okay, second thing, I can choose whether I want to upload my entire file or whether I want to select certain people to put up. Okay, so I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to put include everyone in my file. If I uncheck this, then when I get to the end where I say generate it, Roots Magic is going to bring up a list of everybody in my file, and I can go through that list and choose the people that I want to include. Okay, and then finally, what date format do I want the website to use for, for dates? Okay, I enter that. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Okay, the next thing page is I'm going to I'm kind of designing my home page, my home page for my site. So I'm going to select the title for my home page, an introduction. That's where I can put whatever I want. I you know I can say this is this is a sample website. It's an here's an introduction. You know I can write a paragraph, two paragraphs, whatever. Okay, next if I want a picture on my home page, you know just to kind of to kind of spice it up. I can go and click Browse, and I can select an image and put that image. Okay. I can also choose contact information. If I want to be able to have contact information on my website so that users that visit my website can click a little contact link and, and, and be able to uh, see my address or send me an email, and you can do either or both or neither, uh, then, then it will do that. Now, 
Um, you, I, we, you'll see when I when I actually generate this site, this um, this email address is is basically it's protected. You don't have to worry about spam scrapers coming and getting it because it's not actually stored in the, the like the HTML file. Okay, it's actually kind of generated on the fly, and the user actually has to click uh, a link to actually pop up a little window to see that. Okay, so you know you you can feel pretty safe actually going ahead and putting your address in, but it's up to you how, whether you want to do that or not. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Now this is the page where I'm going to choose what information I want to include. Okay, besides like which people, so I can choose whether or not I want to include a GEDCOM file of my data. If I check that, Roots Magic will up create a GEDCOM of that of whatever I pick, and it's going to put that up on my website with a link where a user can click on it and they can download a GEDCOM file. Now, I personally don't do it. That doesn't mean you shouldn't. I personally don't do it. I, if, if What I would do is in that introduction paragraph, I say, hey, if you find it, that we have anything in common, you know, contact me. I'll be happy to send you a GEDCOM. Because what I don't want is for people to just come along and say, oh, look, we're related, and download my GEDCOM, and I never hear from them. Okay, so you can actually, you know, say something along the lines of, you know, hey, I'd be happy to share my GEDCOM with you, you know, just contact me. You can also choose whether or not you want the notes in your file to be included, your sources, your photos, and you can choose whether or not you only want the primary photo, in other words, the one primary photo. Now, this can be useful. You can, if you don't check, check that, Roots Magic will include all of your photos. Uh, just keep in mind that if you got a you know 8,000 photos, that could be a very very big website. Now, this publisher does uh, try to help you with that. Even if you do that, if you've got 10 megabyte photos, Roots Magic does not actually add a 10 megabyte photo to your website. It actually creates a 600 by 600 image which is a good size image for you to be able to display on the screen there. Okay, um, the, this ne next part, this is really important if you are including living people in your, in your database. You know, if you're picking somebody, you know, that was 100 years ago and their ancestors, no big deal. But if you're including living people, it's usually a good idea to privatize the living people. If you don't, if I uncheck that, when I create that website, every piece of information about everybody living or dead is going to be included. But if I check that, it's going to use this to choose how to kind of filter my information. So I can either say, yeah, include the full name or just write the word living. And then I can also do facts. So if I don't mind people seeing the names of the living people, but I just don't want them to have any information about their birth or you know, marriage or anything like that, I can, I can do it this way. On the other hand, I could say living, and then I could actually say, oh, yeah, um, go ahead and print the full date and place for facts, or I could say uh, only print the year with no place. In other words, only say the year, or only say the place, but don't give any dates. So you got a lot of flexibility as to how um, living people will be treated. Okay, now you also have the ability to include or not include private facts and private notes. And if you, if you want to include the private notes, you can strip the brackets. Um, anyways, you can just experiment with that. Finally, at the bottom of this, this is where you can add uh, links to your, if you have other websites or you have pages that you'd like to be able to add a link to from your home page you've created, you can do that. This, is, this column right here is for the text that you actually want to show, and this column is for the link, the URL, where they will go to if they click that. And you can add up to 10 of those. Okay, so I've gone through and I've selected all the options that I want, and so now my next step is to go ahead and generate the site. When I generate the site, what Roots Magic is going to do, in this case, it's going to say that website project already exists. What it means is that folder that I had, that project folder, I've already created this once before. So I want to create it again. 
uh, in other words, delete what's there and replace what I had with this one. Okay, and it's creating the files, and it's telling me right here, the files to be published are in this folder. So this, all the files that are necessary for this website are in that folder. Okay, now I have three options, right? Or it, it shows two options. There's actually three options. One option uh, is just to click cancel and take the files that are in that folder and upload them to my own server. Okay, these websites, although they're dynamic, in other words, although they actually generate the pages as they go, they are purely, completely self-contained. They do not require uh, a database engine or anything like that to be installed on your server. If you happen to have Dropbox, you can take these files and drop these files in your public Dropbox folder, and it'll work just as well as it does you know, on our site or whatever. Now, our site, the my.rootsmagic.com, does have a size limit. Now, it's a pretty high size limit, and we've had people with, you know, you know, 20,000 and a, a lot of pictures uh, be able to, you know, stay under that size limit. Roots Magic does try to, you know, with the pictures and stuff, uh, does try to actually be somewhat efficient. Uh, but just keep in mind that if you've got 300,000 names and each one of them has a picture attached to it, uh, you're not probably going to be able to fit. Okay, that size limit currently is 50 megabytes. Okay, um, now that doesn't mean we want you trying to see if you can cram 50 megabytes up there. Uh, one of the great things about my.rootsmagic.com is that it's free. Okay, now when we say it's free, we mean it's free to our users. It's not free to us. Uh, so, you know, now we're not saying don't, you, don't use all that you need, but, you know, you know, like like at an all you can eat place, you know, take you know take what you can eat, you know, and 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 kind of leave it at that. Okay, so you can upload it to your to your own server. Okay, the second thing you can do is if, if you just want to look at what this website's going to look like uh, before you upload it, you can say preview this site in your browser. Now, what I'm going to do is it's actually going to open up my website files, the ones that are on my hard drive right here, and let me view them. Now, I happen to have Chrome as my default web browser, and of course, it's the one web browser which is a pain in the neck, and it will not work with these websites locally on your computer without us giving it a special command, and that special command has to, only, has to be done when Chrome is not open. Okay, so that's why it's saying, if you've got any Chrome windows already open, close them, and then click OK, and then it's, this will work just great on your, on your local computer. Now, that is not a problem up on the website. When, when you upload your files, whether it's to Dropbox, whether it's to my.rootsmagic, um, whatever, Chrome works great out there. Chrome just does not want to open these certain types of files off of your local hard drive. It's like a protection. It's a kind of a secure type of type of thing that it wants. Explore, Firefox, they don't have that problem. So if your default on your local computer is, is IE or Firefox, you won't get this little warning message. So this is just telling me make sure that I've that I've closed Chrome already, you know, and opened it with that special. And I'm going to say OK. And here, of course, this is hard to see, again, because we're at such a low resolution. This is my website. Okay, there's the title. There's the description. Okay, as I scroll across, there's my picture. As I scroll down, there's my index of my names, my pedigree chart, which I can click on to go to. And these are the two links that I added myself. So those other links that you've added, those will be down here, and you can do that. There's also a navigation, a little navigation panel over here. Now, this is what I was talking about with the contact. If I click on contact, it actually pops open a separate little thing. So this is not your, your, your email does not sit here on your home page ready for a spam spammer to come and scrape it off your website. So it, it's only in this pop-up. Okay, so there's your contact. Okay, name index. If they, if they click on the name index, 
what that's going to do is bring up the name index. This is going to be all the people in my file. So th there's my A's. Okay, there's the B's, C's, H's, you know, go to the S's, there's my Smith's. If I click on uh, one of these names, it's going to give me the people in that surname with that, with, that particular, with that particular surname. Okay, now you'll notice that each one of these people has three buttons. Okay, there's the individual, that will take you to their individual page. There's the family. If I click on that, that will give me the different families that that person belongs to and let me choose it, or that person's pedigree chart. Now, if you've used RootsMagic's old website -y code, you know that you could never include everybody in the file. It was if you picked if you picked pedigree chart, it was one person and his ancestors, and that was all. Okay. Now, every single person in your database can be included in this single website and you will have the pedigree chart, the family group, and an individual page for every single one of those. Okay, now there's also a search. So if somebody comes, uh, it's going to be kind of tough to, actually hold on a second, let me shrink this down a little bit. Okay, to kind of get it there. Okay, if somebody comes along, they can actually start typing. So if they type in Smith, okay, as I type in Smith, you'll notice that it's filtering my name index to include only those. If I type in Smith S, okay, it's filtering it. Okay, if I type in Smith comma H O W, okay, it is going to filter down my name index. So if they do last name comma first name, then it's going to filter that list right down to exactly whoever it is I'm looking for. Okay, I'm gonna, and, 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 and again, I can hop to there. Now I'm going to hop to the pedigree. I'm going to hop to this pedigree view right here. And let me shrink this page down again so that you can kind of see this a little bit better. Okay. This is RootsMagic's pedigree view for this particular website. Okay. So if I, if I have pictures, those pictures will be there. If I have my database color coded, that color coding is going to be there as well. Okay. If I want to see more information about Howard Smith Sr., I can go click on his individual page, and I am now on his individual page. And so I've got his information, and I can, again, from any time I list a person on this website, I can go to their individual page, to their families, okay, or to their pedigree. I can scroll down, and I can see, I'll see all of their pictures. If I click on the picture, there's their picture. Okay, as I scroll on down, there's the events in their life, and let me scroll over so you can actually see that with those, you also have notes and sources. So if I've included my notes and sources, I can, if I want to see the note, click right there. There's the note. Okay, if I want to see the sources, there's the sources. Okay, if there's media, I can click on the media to see the media for that item as well. And then, of course, I can scroll down farther and see the various families. Okay, I can see their spouses with their children. I can see uh, the, you know, the, their father, their mother, and their siblings. And again, every single one of these has the three buttons, so I can go. So if I'm looking on an individual page and I decide, oh, I want to see his family uh, with his parents, I just click on that, and there's the family with his parents, and I'm now to right there. So I can navigate from any, basically from any person, any view, to any other person, any other view uh, within his family just by clicking on the three, little, the three little views. Again, of course, I can go back to the pedigree to get back to that pedigree view as well. Okay, so this is my, a preview of the website that I just created. Okay, so I'm going to come back over here. So I was just looking at that in my browser. That was actually on my hard drive. I was looking at that on my hard drive. Um, somebody asked if you can include photo captions. The answer is yes. Um, I don't know which one of these people had. I don't know which one of these people had a caption on their photo. Um, 
I know, I know at least one of these people had a caption. It, you can do it. I just, I just don't remember off the top of my head which of these people in that file I actually had a caption on their photo. But yes, it will show you the caption. Okay. So, like I said, I've, I've, I've shown you how to preview it in your browser. I've also shown you how to see where your file is so that you can go and upload it to your own server or to your Dropbox folder or whatever. Now, finally, I'm going to show you the publish the actual being able to publish it to my roots magic so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and it's asking me to log in so I have actually already created an account if I hadn't I could click on create an account uh, but I've already created an account yeah. okay and I can enter the password and click log in if you want to if if you're not really sure on your password, you can always click that and it'll show you your password. It won't hide it like that. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And when you log in, and this is what this is, these are the features you'll see when you log in to uh, your account. Uh, you, this publish, you will only see this publish if you've actually gone through and generated the website like we just did. If I actually go into the uh, to that option to manage my account. I won't see this publish. There's several reasons for that. One is, um, you know, one is because at this point the program doesn't necessarily know whether you may have gone in and actually deleted the, the site you had published on your hard drive. So in this case it knows that it's there, so it knows and it knows where it is. Okay? So when you publish, what Roots Magic does is this is actually kind of a two-step process. What we're trying to do is we wanted to speed this up so that you, if you had a fairly big website, you didn't have to sit there online, uh, you know, with this connected online for, you know, 30 minutes while the program uploaded, you know, individual little files and processed them and put them up on the site. So when you click Publish, what Roots Magic does is it just takes the whole site and just blasts it up. And then, the server starts to actually do the processing. It starts to kind of put things where they belong. So when I click publish, it does not automatically instantly show up on your website, but that's what this second option for is check site status. It'll actually, you can click that, and it will show you what percentage per complete your site is. Now, if your site happens to have, you know, 20,000 names, you know, that's, that's, that, actual processing can take a little while, but you can you can go in and check on it. Um, you can also do some of these other things, and I'll come back to them in a second. Right now, I'm just going to publish the site. So I click Publish. Okay, Roots Magic basically says we're ready to publish, and it says, okay, there's some terms. We need you to realize that if you click Publish, you're agreeing to these terms. Those terms, you can look at them. Basically, it's a bunch of legalese that but pretty much just says that we have permission we being Roots Magic have permission to show your show your site, okay? Because you still own your data. We do not claim any ownership over anything you upload, okay? Anything you upload, you can go in and, as you can see, you can go in and delete it anytime you want, okay? We're not we're not trying to collect data to sell to people. We're not trying to collect data. We're not even really. Uh, we're not actually even, you know promoting your site. You know, you're basically putting your site up and then you're going to tell the people that you want to know about it, about it. Okay, so that's what that is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click publish and it's going to upload the site and now my site has been uploaded. Okay, that, that my entire site now has been uploaded. It may take a little longer than that if you have a huge site. So I could, if I wanted to, if I just want to go to bed, I can click finished and I can just let it do its thing and when I wake up in the morning, everything will be done. Or I can return to the account options, and I can check site status. So when I click on that, it's saying my, my website, which isn't huge, is 60% done. Okay? And I can just be nosy, and I can just keep clicking on it. It's 83% done. If you've got a huge website, this is going to be very frustrating to you, so don't just keep sitting here doing it. Okay, my website is now complete. Okay, so in other words, I now have my website is up and there. Now, if I decide I don't want that website up there, I can click on delete the current site, and it'll say, are you sure? And that website will be gone. Okay? Um, your account will still be alive. In other words, my Bruce account 
up on my, my dot roots magic will still be there, but all the files on that site will be gone. On the other hand, if I don't want my Bruce account anymore, I can click delete account, and that will not only delete all the files, but it will actually delete that Bruce account. So if I ever try later to log in as Bruce using my login and password, it's not going to be able to do it because it's not there anymore. Change password. If I want to change the password, that's, that's how I can do that. And if I want to change the email address that's associated with it, I can do that. And again, this is just the address that we can contact you with about your website, and it's not shared with anybody else. Um, and it's not the same as whatever email address you put as your contact on your website. So if you have like a, a, an email address that you kind of use for yourself that you want to be contacted at, that can be different from the, web, the, the email address you put as a contact on your website. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cl close this because my website is now up there, and I'm going to go into my browser, and I'm going to go to my.brutesmagic.com slash Bruce. Okay, there's the one I just created, and there's my website. We actually already saw this in, in my local browser when I looked at it locally, but now it's online. Okay, and it's, it, it's, it works exactly the same. Um, so you'll get to see kind of the, the performance here. This is the performance that you'll find on, with these websites online. So if I click on pedigree, okay, there's, your, there's my pedigree chart. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so you can kind of see it there. Okay, if I go and I click on an individual page, there's my individual page. Okay, if I go and click back on a pedigree for him, there's a pedigree. You also have the little navigation, so if I want to go back down to Howard's child, I can click on it, and it takes me down. I can go up and down, so I can navigate. So this, is, this would also be different from other static websites you may have seen with pedigree charts where it's just a bunch of four-generation charts, and you click on it, and it changes the whole four-generation chart. Um, this actually lets you, lets you do that as you're moving down. Okay, you notice when I clicked on the down arrow, it took me back to my normal starting person, but I don't have to do that. If I click on the little plus, it will show me the their other children, so I can actually navigate down the list to any of the children. So I want to go down to Elizabeth, I can go down to her. So I can, I can actually go up and down, up and down, and pick who it is that I actually want to go down. Um, so... That's an overview of, of the online publishing. Now, I'm seeing a few questions here. Um, one question, to change your site data, do you overwrite by republishing, or do you delete it first and then put up the new data? Okay, I recommend when you want, when you want to uh, overwrite your site, if, if what you're doing, if the site is pretty much exactly the same, it's just you've changed some data, you can go ahead and just re-upload it. On the other hand, if you've made a lot of changes, uh, you know, you've, or, or, you, or you decide you're taking some pictures off or things like that, then I would recommend going and deleting the original site first. Okay. Now, Roots Magic does not automatically um, delete, the, delete your website first. Uh, the reason for that is because on some really large websites, that delete can actually take quite a while to actually perform. And so if we were to delete it on some of those really large websites, you would say delete, and you might have to wait a half hour before you could get around to actually um, re-uploading uploading the site. And so um, if, if, you're gonna make a, if you're making a bunch of huge changes, I, go ahead and delete it. You know, if you, if you just want to do kind of a general cleanup on your site, Go ahead and delete it. But if you're basically just replacing the site with pretty much the same site, just with newer data, I wouldn't worry about going through the delete. I would just go ahead and re-upload uh, upload it. Okay, question. Can you password protect the site? No, you can't. Um, will your page be public or private? Okay, your page will basically be public in that anybody who knows about it can get to it. On the other hand, we are not indexing your site, and so we are not going to have some index that says, you know, lets people search your site. So the only people who will know about your site will be the people you tell about your site. Um, 
let's see, is, is my.rootsmagic.com indexed by Google, Bing, or Yahoo? Currently, no, they are not. Okay, and can Google spiders find it? No, Google, the way the, way the websites work, um, they are not just a bunch of HTML files. Okay, that's, that's why, why I say that these, I, I was calling these sites dynamic sites. In other words, dynamic sites being, you know, mean that I can actually select people and which one am I specifically going to go to. These pages are actually generated from kind of a database-y type of structure. So this data, this data here is not sitting in an HTML file. So the, the Google... Yahoo type searches, uh, search robots, search spiders uh, are not currently going to be able to find this. Now we are looking into some ways to give you the option uh, of of putting a file, putting kind of a file with your with your website that will let them find it if you want. That will be an option, so you would be able to um, actually be able to, uh, you know decide whether or not you want your, your website to be uh, indexable or not. But right now, uh, your site is not indexable. So if you, like I say, the, currently the only people who are really going to see uh, your website are going to be the people you share it with. So the only people who would know that my website was at my.rootsmagic.com slash Bruce are going to be the people I tell it to, or of course anybody who watches this webinar now, um, you know, that's, um, you know, those are going to be the only people that do that. One, one thing I should point out, it's something that kind of caught me, you do need to realize that this URL is going to be case sensitive. So if I, when I created my account, if I used a capital B for Bruce, I need to make sure I use a capital B for this URL because it is case sensitive because it's, uh, because of the server type that it's on. Um, so, you know, basically what you'll do is you can email your family and say, hey, here's the URL for the website, and then that's, uh, then that's what it's, uh, you know, that's how you're going to share it. Um, anyways. So, like I say, we're about we're about out of time here. Um, we, like I say, we will be having individual webinars on each of these individual features, where we can go into more detail on each one specifically. And so, what I'm going to do is I am going to turn the time uh, back over to Mike, and we're going to do. Um, I think we're going to do another little poll to see what your thoughts are on what feature you're most excited about now, see if it's changed or if it's the same. Uh, and then we're also going to give away a couple of copies of Roots Magic 6. Okay, let's put up this other poll. Now that you've had a chance to see some of these new features, go ahead and select the feature that you are most excited about. Whether it's online publishing, editable, editable timeline view, find everywhere, web tags, or some other feature. And the results, 39% of you are most interested in online publishing. So that's a little bit of a change from our first poll. So some of you have switched your vote over to the online publishing. 15% uh, voting for the edit editable timeline view, 24% for the find everywhere, 19% for web tags, and 3% for the others. So we have a lot fewer uh, fence sitters this time. Okay. Great. Well, let's go ahead and give. Let's go ahead and give away two copies of Roots Magic Six. Now, here's how we're going to do this. If you look there on your webinar control panel, you should see a uh, little button that looks like a hand that can be raised or not. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do the 20th hand raise. Okay, so I'm going to count down from five. And when we get to zero, press the raise your hand button and the 20th person will get a copy of Roots Magic 6. So, are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go. 
Okay, so Stephen Petty. So Stephen, you are our first winner, and you'll receive your Roots Magic 6 key in just a few minutes. And let's go ahead and do our second prize. Okay, we'll do another copy of Roots Magic 6, and we'll do it the same way. We'll do a countdown from 5, and then you want to raise your hand, and this time we will do the, how about if we do the 6th person in honor of Roots Magic 6. Okay, so we'll count down. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And the sixth person is Walt Williams. Okay, so congratulations, Stephen and Walt. Uh, you should get your registration keys in just a few minutes. And uh, for everyone else, thank you so much for joining us this evening with What's New in Roots Magic 6. Like Bruce said, we're going to be scheduling some more webinars going over these new features in more detail. Uh, and we hope to see you there. Thanks.